In this video, we're gonna talk about renal anatomy. Each kidney has an outer cortex or the renal cortex, which projects toward the medulla, and this part of the cortex is called the renal columns or the, or the columns of uh, Berdini. And these are the renal medulla. Renal medulla looks like a pyramid, so these are also called the renal pyramids. This each renal pyramid has a base and a renal papilla. At the tip of the renal papilla, there are small openings. These are called the foramina papillaria. And this perforated area is also known as the lamina cribrosa or the cribriform plate. And these striated structures are called the, uh, these are the uh, me mechulare, mechulare, um, there are the striated structures actually consist of tubules that drain the urine separated from blood in the renal cortex and transfer toward the medulla. These are the stria medullaris. Stria medullaris. In the, in the kidney, this is the renal pyramus and surrounding renal cortex together make up a renal lobe. And this foramina papillaria actually are the uh, openings of the collecting duct. This is a papillary collecting duct. Through the collecting ducts, urine empty into the, this minor calyx. Minor calyx caps the renal papilla. This minor calyx is a minor calyx, minor calyx, minor calyx, which unite and form the major calyx. Major calyxes unite and form the renal pelvis. Renal pelvis, as it goes down, becomes uh, narrowed and then continues at ureter. This is the ureter. Now, there is another structure. It's called renal sinus. We should not confuse renal sinus with the renal pelvis. Renal sinus is the part of the kidney which holds the renal pelvis, renal vessels, and the, the fat tissue in it. Now, if we, if we take this out, the space that houses these structures is the renal sinus. Here is the renal hilum, with, through which the ureter and the vein, renal vein, leave the kidney, but the arteries, renal artery, and the nerves enter the kidney. In the renal hilum, from anterior to posterior, we have the following structures. From anterior to the posterior, we have the renal vein, then two uh, branches of the renal artery, then the ureter, then the third branches of the renal artery. Now, this is the renal artery. Renal artery branches into segmental artery. Here is the segmental artery. Segmental artery divides into uh, lobur artery. Then lobur artery continues as the interlobur artery. This is the interlobur artery. Interlobur artery becomes the arcuate artery at the border 
between the renal cortex and the renal medulla. Now, several interlobular arteries arise from the arcuate artery. Look at here. This is the arcuate artery. You see, several interlobular arteries arise from the arcuate artery. Then, several afferent arterial arises from the interlobular artery. This afferent arterial coils around its cells, coils around its cells, and form a tuft of capillaries called glomerulus. Look at this is the glomerulus. This is the afferent arterial which coils around itself and forms this glomerulus, uh, a tuft of capillaries. Then, this, after formation of this glomerulus, the vessel continues as the efferent arterial. This is the efferent arterial. Look at here is the efferent arterial. Efferent arterial, efferent arterial. This is the efferent arterial. Now look at this model where you can clearly see that the diameter of the afferent arterial is larger than that of efferent arterial. That means the amount of blood getting inside the glomerulus is more than the amount of blood leaving the glomerulus through the efferent arterial. This difference creates a pressure in the glomerulus. Under the, this pressure, fluid part of the blood with uh, metabolic waste are pushed out the capillaries into the Bowman capsule space. Now here is the glomerulus. This is the glomerular capsule or the Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule has a visceral layer that covers the glomerulus and its outer layer is the parietal layer. Between two you have the uh, space of Bowman capsule where the fit, uh, filtrate is uh, accumulated. Now, glomerulus and surrounding capsule is called renal corpuscle. So, this is a renal corpuscle. This renal corpuscle has two poles, has a vascular pole and a tubular pole. Vascular pole has an afferent arterial which enters the glomerulus and efferent arterial which leaves the glomerulus. At the tubular pole, proximal convoluted tubule initiates or starts from the tubular pole. Now, this efferent arterial supplies tubules in the cortex. So those uh, capillaries are called peritubular capillaries because they supply the uh, tubules in the cortex. So this, this uh, projections of this efferent arterioles uh, are called the peritubular capillaries. Some of the efferent arterioles course down the medulla in a straight fashion. So the, the, the straight arteries running deep into the medulla are called vasa recta. We have two different types of vasa recta based on their origin. If Vasa recta originating from the efferent uh, arterial. In other words, if the vasa recta is the continuation of the efferent arterial, as you see here, this is called vasa recta spuria. Now, if vasa recta originating from the 
interlobular artery as you see here as you see here or originating from the arcuate artery which is not illustrated here but also there are ways of recta originating from arcuate artery as well so the ways of recti originating from either the arcuate artery or the inter labular artery are called vesa recta vera. Both vesa recta uh, are important or they function in concentration of urine. Now, let's look at these corpuscles. This, this is the renal corpuscle. Renal corpuscle uh, as I have earlier uh, explained, consists of glomerulus and surround, surrounding capsule, or the Bowman's capsule. Look at here. Um, renal carpuscle plus renal tubules, these tubules, together make up a nephron, which is the functional unit of the kidney. And each kidney has 1.250 uh, 1, thousand nephrons. And each nephron consists of renal corpuscle plus renal tubules. These renal tubules include the proximal convoluted tubule. The name proximal is based on the uh, the glomerulus the um, you see it's starting from the glomerulus so this is the proximal convoluted tubule which continues with the loop of Henle loop of Henle has a descending lean which has thick part thin part it is the ascending part of the loop of Henle which has, look at here, a thin part and a thick part. Then here you have the distal convoluted tubule. Distal convoluted tubule joins the collecting duct through this cortical collecting duct. This is the cortical collecting duct. Several cortical collecting ducts unite each other and form a papillary duct. Popular duct is larger one, or the duct of Bellini, which drains into the um, minor calyx, because minor calyx caps the tip of the renal papilla. Now look at here. Here we have two different types of nephrons. This is the cortical nephron which is characterized with a short loop of Henle. And cortical nephrons are located out of two-thirds of the renal cortex. Around 85% of the nephrons are cortical nephrons. Now look at this one. This is located in one-third of the renal cortex at the renal cortex and medulla border. So this is called the uh, yuxta glomerular or the juxta glomerular nephron. Juxta glomerular nephrons form uh, around 15% of the entire nephrons and they are characterized with a long loop of Henle. This Chatsda glomerular nephrons also function in concentration of urine. So, there are two anatomical entities which function in concentration of the urine. These are the vesa recti and the yuxta or the chatsda glomerular nephrons.